I'm gonna read one verse to kick the message off, but I'm going to go through the entire chapter. So what that means is if you have your Bibles, you wanna stay in Judges chapter five as I set the message up. But verse 23, let's look at it together. Curse Maraz, everybody say Maraz. Said the angel of the Lord, curse its people bitterly. My Lord, the angel's upset. Because they did not come to help the Lord, to help the Lord against the mighty. I want you to get the picture here. The picture is one of a battle. And Deborah is painting the picture of this battle by singing a song. And as you go through the verses of the song, she's helping us catch a glimpse of how when God goes into a battle, how creation is to respond, how, how the people of God are to respond. And so I want to talk to you on that final verse, curse Maraz, but really I want to talk to you about how you have been blessed for the battle. You've been blessed to be involved. You've been blessed to participate. You've not been blessed in the way that you have for ease. You've not been blessed in the way that you have for your comfort. You have been blessed for the battle. God anticipates his people's involvement. He anticipates our ready response when he wants to do something. He expects us, according to verse 2 of that chapter, to willingly offer ourselves. The Bible goes on to say that not only did people say they wanted to be involved, but you find here that even the earth began to tremble. It was as if the earth had ears and listened down to God saying, I'm going into a battle. And even the earth began to say to itself, I can't grab a spear and I can't grab a sword. I can't shoot an arrow, but somehow, some way, I want to get involved, and so maybe I could shake, and that would help God in his battle. The night sky began to cover the sun. It was as if the sun would say in the same way that the earth did, I don't have any military ability, but what I can do is I can turn myself off, and if God's enemy needs light, I can make sure that the lights are off and his enemy has to fight in the dark. The clouds watch the sun go dark. They watch the earth begin to tremble, and the clouds begin to say, surely there's something I can do to help God in the battle. Surely there's something I can do to play a part. I'm just a cloud, but what I can do is I can begin to drop water onto the earth. And it could be that if enough water drops, there will be pools of mud. And when the enemy tries to find its footing, maybe it will be unable to do so. And I can help God in the battle. The Bible says the mountains begin to melt. I don't know if this was an earthquake or a mudslide or maybe a, a, a rock or boulder crashing down. I don't know exactly what it is, but even the mountain began to take note of how all of God's creation wanted to get involved. So even the mountain said, I'm not going to allow there to be a place for the enemy of God to hide in these mountains. The governors of Israel willingly offered themselves. Deborah begins to sing a song. It was as if Deborah would say, God's in a battle, and, and because of who I am, I'm, I'm not trained to be a soldier. I, I'm not violent in nature, but maybe I can sing a song, and that song would help God in his battle. Zebulon, who had the pen of a writer, begins to say, maybe I can take notes. Zebulon was a tribe that was clerical, they weren't a military tribe, but they could take notes, and they said, that's what we'll do to get involved in the battle. Barak was sent on foot. Nephtali jeopardized their lives unto death because God was in a battle. They said, we're going to get involved in the battle. Kings from the earth began to gather around and took no gain for themselves. They just wanted to be involved in the battle. The stars in heaven begin to move. So if the enemy needed direction, needed to know where to go, the stars even begin to move in their places to confuse the enemy so the enemy could not have direction. All of this begins to happen because 
The creation as we know it was wanting to help God in the battle. The river Kishon watches the sun and watches the mountains melt and watches the earth tremble and watches the sun go dark and says, surely I can do something. And maybe what I could do is when the enemies walk down to my shores and the banks to drink water, what I'll do is I'll swell and the swell of the banks will wash the enemy down the river and they'll be unable to be in the battle because of my desire to participate in the battle. It then says that the horses begin to prance. It was like even horses knew, I can't get a spear and I can't lift a shield. There's nothing I can do in that way. But what I can do is I can get the enemy beneath my feet and I can begin to stomp on the enemy and help God in his battles. You see, what we learn is it's not that God needs the horse. It's not that he needs the mountains. It's not that he needs the sun. He doesn't need any of that to assist him in his battle. But he involves us because through involving us, he blesses us. And we have to learn that we've not been blessed to sit back and watch and sit back and spectate. We've been blessed to be involved. We've been blessed to participate. We've been blessed for the battle. In Judges chapter 5, verse 23, we read it. The angel of the Lord is looking down and seeing all that's happening. And he sees the city of Miraz and the people and the inhabitants of that city. And he says, curse Miraz, curse its people bitterly because they came not to help the Lord or to help the Lord against the mighty. In other words, while the women were singing and the horses are stomping and the mountains are melting and the rivers are washing people away and the stars are moving, as people are walking to the battle, as other people were putting their very lives on the line, the people there in this tribe called Miraz seemed to set back and were unwilling to participate. They had their hands in their pockets saying, we don't desire to get involved. And the angel of the Lord spotted these people, watched these people, and he said, curse Miraz, curse these people. There's something about the blessing that they don't understand. There's something about about what I've done for them that they don't understand. Commentaries would say that this city was located next to the battlefield. They were very close to the battle. So if the battle was won, these people would benefit the most from it. If the battle was lost, these people would suffer the most. But yet even though they were the ones who were really in the heart of the battle, they seemed disinterested to get involved. They seemed like there was, there was no reason or purpose for them to get involved. These same people, according to the Hebrew, this place miraz means a place of costliness. The Greek means anointed with costly oil. So this is not an ordinary place. Miraz is a costly place. This is an anointed place. This is a place that a great price was paid for them to have the blessing that they have. Yet the people that occupied this place, their attitude was someone else can pay the price. Someone else can fight the battle. Someone else can put the effort in. Someone else can do their part. We could care less about doing anything ourselves. And the angel of the Lord said, that kind of mindset is cursed. The anointing you've received, Miraz, is for service. The blessing you've received is for service. Everything I've done for you is for service. And a curse is not some form of black magic. A curse means to make small, to make insignificant. And what happens to so many people is they believe the lie that they don't matter. They believe the lie that they're insignificant. They believe the lie that they can't do something great for God. And the truth of the matter is you've been blessed for the battle. You've been blessed to be involved and you cannot misuse the blessing. You can't abuse the blessing. How do you misuse it? Through inactivity, through your hands being in your pocket. No one in this room should ever be under the curse of Miraz. We're in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. Our families are under attack. If your family has not been under attack in some way, you are the rare exception. This next generation is under attack. And what I'm here to try to tell you is no one should be standing by with their hands in their pockets because God is in a battle. And you've been blessed to be involved in the battle. Matthew 12 and verse 30, Jesus said, he who is not with me is against me. 
pretty strong, isn't it? Jesus said that. Then he goes on to say, he who does not gather with me scatters. Matthew 25, the parable of the talent. Jesus looks at this servant and he calls him wicked, unprofitable, and slothful. He says to this wicked servant, you're going to be thrown into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is Jesus speaking and it's pretty dramatic, don't you think? And he's not thrown into outer darkness because he doesn't have 10 talents. And he's not thrown into where there's gnashing of teeth because he doesn't have five talents. And he's not in this place of complete and total darkness because he doesn't have two talents. He's in this place because the talent that he has, he does nothing with it. He did nothing with what he was given. And the point is the curse of Miraz is not an Old Testament principle. We see Jesus speaking about it over and over. You've been blessed to be involved. You've been blessed to be a blessing. You've been blessed to participate. You've been blessed for the battle. And you cannot tell me that God did not shed his sinless, sacred, precious blood to save your soul for you to do nothing. You cannot tell me that God filled you with the power of his Holy Spirit for you to remain inactive. You cannot tell me there's not something that God wants you to do, that there's nothing you can do, that there's not some ability, some gift, some talent, some anointing, some blessing that you can do to use that for the work of God. You've been blessed for the battle. Ephesians 6 talks about the armor of God. Not so you can look at it. It's not an aesthetic. It says you put it on with anticipation that God is in a battle and I want to be on the Lord's side. Perhaps one of the most confusing scriptures you can read is in Gethsemane. The Bible says there was a group of people in verse chapter 27, verse 36, that were sitting down, and it says they watched him there. So Jesus is bleeding. He's burdened. He's collapsed under the weight of the cross that he's about to carry. And there's a group of people that are there, and they've not nailed his hands or his feet. They've not pierced his side. They've not beat him. They've not used that jagged whip to rip his back open. They've done none of that. They sat down and they watched him there. That's the curse of Miraz. Sitting, watching, inactivity. David came to a battlefield. His oldest brother, Eliab, looks at him and says, I know the wickedness in your heart that you've come only to watch. In other words, his brother says it's wicked if all you do is come to watch. If all you do is believe that your appearance of support is enough. No, there's something more that God was looking for. And of course, we know that he was wrong about David, that David not, did not come to watch the battle. David came to win the battle. David did not come to see the battle. He came to stop the battle. And if you are in the house of God, if you are a child of God, you are also engaged in a battle. The devil is not neutral. The devil is not gonna sit back, take the day off. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't take vacations. He doesn't take a day off. He never ceases, never stops to accomplish his mission and that is to do anything he can to steal, kill, and destroy and there's only one thing standing in between the enemy and his desire to destroy this planet, destroy the human race, destroy everything that we're about and that is the people of God saying not while we're here, not on our watch, not on our hour, we will get in the battle. Someone shout, I'm on the Lord's side. I've been blessed to be in the battle. You say, well, what can I do? I'm unable to prophesy. What can I do? I can't dream dreams. What can I do? I can't interpret Daniel and his visions or the seven 
headed beast in Revelation or the wheel within a wheel within a wheel that Ezekiel talked about. I don't know anything about that, but you can pick up a vacuum. You can clean a bathroom. You can organize. You can lead. You can do something. You can usher. You can jump in the hills, kids. You can open up your home for a small group. You can win souls at work. You can be a bus driver or a van driver for the youth group. You can be a planner. You can be a missionary. You can be involved. The blessing comes on those who say, I'm willing and wanting to be involved. I'll help. I'll go. I'll do it. Use me. The answer is always yes. I want to be involved in the battle. I don't want to just watch the mountains get involved. I don't want to just watch the oceans and the rivers. I don't want to sit back and watch all of creation do its part. And I sit back and watch the rocks cry out and I do nothing. No, 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 no. There's something that God wants me to do to get involved in the battle. Matthew 20 and verse 6, the Bible says, why do you stand here all day idle? You know what they said? Because no one has hired us. No one told me what to do. They're sitting back waiting for someone to come up and explain to them every detail of exactly what they should do. And the guy's saying, what, what are you talking about? All kinds of work to be done, no initiative, no, I'll do, no, even if no one tells me what to do, what can I do? Can you, can you pray for 15 seconds on your way to service? God bless the service, anoint the preaching, anoint the, the, the worship. God, can you do something? Can you just pick up the cigarette butt instead of throw it down? Can you do something? I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Is there something you can do? Is there a way you can be involved? Can you smile? Can you shake somebody's hand? Can, can, can you not get mad at somebody because it takes a few minutes to get out of the parking lot? Can, can, can you wave at the police? I'm just asking a question just for a moment. Is there something you can do? And the answer is yes. You've been blessed. You've been blessed upon, beyond your wildest expectations. Has God not been good to every single one of you? You're here. You're in God's house. And he's blessed blessed you for the battle. He's blessed you with the purpose. <laughs> Mark 14 and verse 8. A woman breaks open this box of expensive ointment and perfume. She immediately met criticism and Jesus stood up himself and defended her. And these were his astounding words. Because she had done what she could. This woman's moment will be told as a memorial to her, to future generations, not because what she did was spectacular or, or gigantic or, or impressive. No, she did what she could. And the Lord said, I am pleased because she did what she could. I don't believe this city would ever be the same if we could break the stereotype of 80% of the people setting back and letting 20% of the people do the work. If we would just say, not here, not, this is not Miraz. We've been anointed, God's blessed us, and he's blessed us with a purpose, and not them, and not they, and not those over there, me. I am here, and I want to be involved. Put me in the battle, put me to work. Give me something I can do. We would change this city. We would shake our world if we would simply say, I want to help. I want to do something. So the curse came on inactivity and unwillingness to be involved. So the blessing comes on an attitude that says, I'll do it. I'll help. I'll go. Why not? Of course. Sure. Why would I not do something? I mean, I see that the sun can play its part, and I see the mountains can play their part. I see the river can do its part. I see, I see the, the, the oceans can, I see all that. Surely, 
My answer is going to be, I'll find something to do. If a cloud, a soft little uh, floaty cloud can find something to do, I can find something of weight to do. One of the greatest ways to see the blessing come into your life is to stop the cursing. Stop the inactivity. Stop the negative reasons on why you can't. And just say, there's something I can do. There is a gift. There is something I can bring to the table. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 says, you're called to inherit a blessing. In other words, we are called to be people that bring blessing everywhere we go. That's what we're called to do. We bless people. The Bible even says we bless our, our enemies. Even our enemies, we bless them. That's what we're gifted to do. We're just gifted to be a blessing. We bless children. We bless the next, next generation. We bless situ situations, futures, marriages, time, by the way we use it, by the way we use other people's time. We bless stuff. That's land. That's homes. That's our finances. It's just stuff, but it's different when the blessing of God is on it. We bless God through our obedience, through our worship, through our praise. We join with the angels of heaven and do what? We give blessing and honor and glory to him who lives forever and ever ever. Amen. We're called to be people of blessing wherever we go. And the lie is that when you become a Christian, that Jesus took on the curse. That's the lie. When you become a Christian, you receive salvation through receiving forgiveness, right? Not because he died. That's the part that he's done. You just receive what he's done. You don't have to do anything, but you have to receive the forgiveness. That's called repentance. That's called turning from your old life, turning towards the new life. He took on your shame, but a lot of Christians walk around in shame, do they not? Because they haven't learned that on the cross, Jesus not only took their sin, not only does he want to give you forgiveness, but he wants to free you from any shame, any guilt from your old life. He wants to cleanse you and wash you and let you know that you're his beloved, that you're his sons, his daughter, so that he's forgotten that. He does not hold that against you. He's got a brand new life and purpose and future for you. But Christians walk around in shame. Jesus died for them so they don't carry the shame, but they still carry it. So you always have to come to the cross and you have to receive the benefit of what Jesus paid for you to have. You have to receive it. And Jesus did not die on the cross so you and I could walk around cursed. The Bible says, cursed is any man who hangs on the tree. So Jesus took on our curses. That's what iniquity means, generational curses. You're not to walk around with the curse of marauds, the curse of inactivity, the curse of helplessness, the curse of idleness, the curse of apathy and complacency. That's not, as a child of God, that curse has to be broken. And the same way that you receive forgiveness of sins, you have to ask God to break the curse off of your life. And you have to be honest with God about the curse like you are the sin. I need you to forgive me of my sin, free me from my shame, and I also need you to break every curse off of my life. You didn't die for me to be small. You didn't die for me to be insignificant. You didn't die for me to spectate and watch. You died so I could be blessed to be in the battle. Whatever you're doing, God, I want to be a part of it. I've been blessed to be a part of it. So good. Old Testament, there's the story of Balaam and Balak. And the whole story is just about they're trying to curse what God has blessed. And the answer is you can't curse what God has blessed. But you can't bless what God's cursed. And God does not bless in activity. He does not bless the deception of hearing and buying the lie that in hearing I'm doing. James did not write that because he had nothing better to say. He knew that there would be a lie that the people of God would have to deal with, and that is I can't just hear the word. 
I can't just watch. I've got to say now what is my part to do something? How can I be active? How can I be blessed to be in the battle? I'm closing. Luke chapter 14, there's the great parable of the banquet. In verse 15, it says, blessed is he who shall eat the bread of the kingdom of God. Blessed is he who shall eat the bread of the kingdom of God. What is that? That's the will of the Father. That's the bread, doing the will of the Father. So invitations go out. One invitation goes to a man, and he's like, I I can't come to the banquet. And he says, why? He says, because I've got land, and, and I'm a little overwhelmed by the busyness of the land and the things that I've got to do to take responsibility for that, and so I can't go. Another invitation goes out and the man says, I've got five oxen. I would like to be involved, but you know, I've got work and jobs and I'm busy and I've got the pressures of those busy things and so I can't go. Another guy says, well, I I, I can't go because I've got a new wife and we all know, you know, how difficult that can be. (laughs) New or old, it's complicated. Unless you're married to Sarah, then it's just it's easy. It's just easy all the time. But he comes up with his reason. All of them come up with their reasons that they can't go. And then what's, what's the master of the banquet say? He's like, well, go out to the highways and byways and compel, bring the maim, the lame, bring them in. What can a lame person do? That's not what God was asking. He wasn't asking what they can't do. He, was, he didn't care about their limit. He didn't care about their imperfections. He didn't care about their brokenness. He didn't care about that. He wasn't looking for that. What could they do? And you know what they could do? They could say, yes. Yes, I'm willing. Yes, I'll be involved. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll sit down. Yes, yes, I'll do what I can do. Yes, I'll make sure your house is full. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to be the person that says, I'm not going to help. I'm not going to be involved. That parable ends with Jesus saying, none of those who were invited and said no shall taste of my supper or taste of my blessing. The point is this. There is in the Old and the New Testament a great demand on those who have been blessed You've been blessed by the mercy of God, the kindness of God, the grace of God. He has blessed you. He's done wonders in your life. And the responsibility is for us to always say, yes, yes, my life is yours. Yes, my days are yours. I've got other obligations. I can't do it all, but I can do something. I can play a part. I I can live my life to say, I I am willing, I am willing, I am am open, I'm not closed, I'm not resistant, I don't stiff arm God when he says, what are you doing? I make an honest evaluation of myself and my life. Say, God, I wanna get involved in the battle. Hebrews chapter seven and verse one, Abraham had promises but Melchizedek still had to bless him. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I believe that every one of you have greatness, you have promises that are in your life, and I want to speak the blessing of God over every single one of you. That anywhere the lie of that curse, the lie that you can't make it, the lie that you can't do something great for God, the lie of insignificance, the lie of being inferior or inadequate, the lie of not measuring up, all of that, that's the curse. And we're going to ask God today to break that curse off your mind, off your home, off your marriage, off your family, off your future, off your finances, off your gifts, off your talents, in Jesus' name. And then we're going to also declare a blessing over every single one of you. We're gonna declare the blessing of God over your life. Every eye closed, every head bowed, at all of our locations. You'd say, Marcus, as you were speaking, I know that God's blessed me and I am inactive. 
I am not participating. I'm not serving. I'm not playing my part. I'm not doing my part. I often find myself just simply watching. And you want to see God break the curse of inactivity off your life. You say, Marcus, I'm here today and I want to leave this room knowing in my heart, I don't have the details worked out. You don't have to have all this stuff together. That's not what we're asking. The prophet just said, here I am, send me. That's just a here I am attitude. It's not you gotta have everything figured out. That's not what I'm saying. You're here and you say, Marcus, I've not been participating. But I'm not leaving here without saying to God, I'm willing. I want to get involved. I want to participate. I want to do something to advance the kingdom. But right now, you would be honest and you'd say, I am inactive. If that's you, just lift up your hand as high as you can. Lift it high. God bless you. Thank you for your boldness. I love seeing some men in here lift their hands. It's such a big thing for you. We need the men of God like never before. Say, I'm not going to sit back and watch. Those days are over. God bless you. Anybody else? You'd say, man, I've just been, okay, you can put your hand down. Second group of people is, is through, during the message, you, you said, man, I really felt like God was saying, there's more for me. In other words, you, you're doing something, but you, you feel like you know that you could do more. You feel like God is saying to you, he's grateful that you've said yes, but you've kind of, You've kind of said yes, but you said only so far. I'll only do so much. And you feel like God's gonna push you out into the deep a little bit today. If that's you, would you just lift your hand maybe? Just lift your hand as high as you can. Man, so many of you. How precious. We're gonna break the curse of morals off this place. I'd see it. I sense it. Now, how many of you would be here and you'd say, I just, I'm serving. I'm doing everything that I can but I just know, I just don't know the specifics, but I feel like there's something greater that is yet to be unlocked in my future, in my life, something greater that God wants to use me to do. And I'm just here today saying, God, I, I, I'll do whatever you want me to do, but, but the truth is I'm here because I'll do everything I can, but I want you to begin to unlock the blessing of what that greater is for me. If that's you, lift your hand. If you lifted your hand for any one of those three things at all of our locations, at all of our locations, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, on the count of three, invite you to get out of your seat and come to the altar at all of our locations. And when you come to the altar, we're gonna begin to sing the blessing of God over your life. And not only are we gonna sing the blessing of God, but in the same way forgiveness comes, we are together going to announce that the curse is broken, any curse, that would limit you from walking in the place that God wants for you. He places each of us in the body as it pleases him, is what the Bible says. And I believe that that's gonna happen today in a brand new way. So if you raise your hand for any three of those things, unashamedly, quickly get up and come to the altar. One, two, three, quickly come, quickly come. The rest of us can stand as those who lifted their hands. Listen. You can't say, I don't want to be inactive and then stay inactive and stay in your seat. That's part of the, the, the point here. You got to move. You got to move. You got to say, I'm willing to move. I'm willing to do something. I'm willing to take some steps. I'm willing to walk. I'm willing to do more than sit. I'm willing. I'm willing. Come on, let's sing this together. Come on, all of us. Let's proclaim this over those people that are here. Do you need his blessing? Do you need his blessing today? You have all that you need. I don't. We need the blessing of God on this church. Can we declare it together? Come on, declare the blessing of God over your life.
towards heaven, just right where you're at. Blessing is not a prayer, it's not a prophecy. All throughout the scripture, blessings were spoken. Fathers blessed their sons. The blessing is speaking to your potential, speaking to the gifts on the inside of you, calling them out that you will not stay inactive. You will not stay complacent. God is going to use you in greater ways than ever before. That's his promise. And we're going to speak the blessing of God over the promise in your life. That you should look at your life and there should be things you don't understand. There should be things you would say, only God could do this. Only the hand of God could have accomplished this in my life. It's his blessing. If the mountains can melt, if the rivers can swell, if the sun can go dark in the middle of the day, if the horses could prance the enemy under their feet, God's got something for you. God's got something that you can do. And so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break when I say we, I mean I'm speaking in the way that you said I could speak, and that is in the name of Jesus. My words mean nothing, but in the name of Jesus, every knee's got to bow, and every curse has to bow. And so I break the curse of Miraz off of this church the curse of inactivity, the curse of watching, the curse of spectating, the curse of sitting back saying someone else can do it. We break it. We, we ask you to deliver each and every one of us from that curse in Jesus' name. We're willing, we're open. We say yes. We say here we are, send us, use us, bless us for the battle. In Jesus' name. Why don't you just speak that over your life? Say, I break the curse of inactivity. Now say, I'm blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm anointed. That's what the cross was about. So I could be blessed for the battle. So I could be blessed with a purpose in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, there's greater for me. Come on, say, there's greater for me. There's more for me. God is going to reveal it through his spirit. Show me, God, through your blessing, all that you have for me. In Jesus' mighty name, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. That's his favor. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. Your children, your children's children, in Jesus' name. May he be gracious unto you. Anybody need the graciousness of God? I don't need the sternness of God. I need the graciousness of God. I need his graciousness. And how do I get it? By saying, I need you. I need you. I need to stay open. Help us today, God. Lift up your countenance upon us. Let us see those eyes today, those eyes that are pleased with your sons and daughters. And give us peace. Peace in our homes, peace in our minds, peace in our nation, peace in our world, peace. Let us, blessed are the peacemakers. Let us make peace wherever we go. Let us manufacture peace wherever we go. Everywhere we go, it can be complete confusion, but we bring peace. It's who we are. It's who you've called us to be. We've been blessed to do it. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Maybe you're at one of our locations. You're in service today, and you'd say, you're not right with Jesus Christ. Jesus is not the Lord of your life. You're not forgiven. You'd say, Marcus, I've been living for myself. I've been living for this world. I've been living for sin and pleasure. I've been living for all this stuff, but my life has not been committed to God. My life has not been committed to his will. 
and you're here today and you'd say, Marcus, I need forgiveness. I need a new beginning. I need a new start. You want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You need God to cleanse and to wash and to make all things to be brand new. And you'd like me to pray with you. The Bible says you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. Only God through his spirit can bring you to a place of repentance, to a place of saying, I want to change. A place to not just say, I'm going to pray a prayer, but a place where you get a true vision of what your life has been and you make a decision. I don't want that life. I want the life God has for me. And I'm willing to do anything I have to do to say, God, my life is surrendered completely and wholly to you. And you come to that old rugged cross and you come to that place of death and you lay your life down. And the Bible says he raises you back up into a brand new person. If you're here and you say, pray for me, I need that today. I need forgiveness. Lift your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Throw that hand up as high as you can at all of our locations. Lift that hand as high as you can. With your hand raised, put the other hand on your heart. But I want us all to pray this prayer together. We're gonna pray with those who lifted their hands. When you pray this prayer, we believe God makes all things to be brand new. It's not just a prayer. It's an invitation into a brand new life, a life that is a miracle life where old things pass away and behold, all things become brand new. That only happens when sincerely, sincerely in your heart, you say, God, forgive, cleanse. Say this together. Say, Jesus, Thank you for dying on a cross, for shedding your blood for my sin. Forgive, cleanse, wash, make all things to be brand new. I believe that you're God's only son and that he raised you from the dead. And I give you my life now in Jesus name. We all said, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord one more good hand clap together. Thank you so much for watching the message today. And if you've stuck around to this point, we would love to get connected and learn more about you. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.